In today's video, we're going to be building a new quadcopter. Now, this is a pretty interesting quadcopter because it's not like any other build I've done. And this is going to be a beginner's guide and also help you understand why things connect, where they connect, and also give you some soldering tips. Now, for the components we're using here today, they're all linked down below, so you can check those out anytime you want. And let's talk about what makes this so different. Well, it's the stack. Now, if you don't know what a stack is, it's the ESC and the flight controller combo. However, in this build, it's all going to be in one board. Yes, one board. This is called the Racer Star Star F6S, I believe, F46S. So this is a pretty interesting, it's an F4 microcontroller unit with Beale Heli S ESCs, rated up to 45 amps on paper, but you can say 35 amps, so it's gonna be pretty good in that perspective. Is 6S capable as well, but we're only going to build it on a high KV4S to test its uh, performance. It's going to be a pretty interesting build here and a very, very fast one. For the frame, we're using the GEP RC Mark III. I've been wanting to build this for a while. I've had it for a while. So this is where it's going to be built. Also for motors, we're using the Flywoo 2207.5 2750 kV if I remember correctly. Yep, 2750 kV. So these are going to make for an interesting build as well. And for the video transmitter, we're using the AKK FX2 Ultimate here. This is a really great video transmitter in my opinion. I've used a couple of them and I really like them as well. And it's going to be stackable and we have enough space to stack as many things as we want because obviously we're just using one board here. So we're going to use that. It also has smart audio. Here at camera, we're using one of the Fox series, which I'll have linked down below. I don't know which one this one is. For receiver, we're going to be using the X4R. I think these are called the X4 or XSR. I'll have that linked as well. Low ESR capacitor. It comes with the flight controller, so that's really great. Well, we have to install this. We should install this. For tools, it's going to be pretty basic. My normal recommended hex driver toolkit. This comes with every single size you'll ever need for any quadcopter, whether it's a micro or a 5-inch. It comes with four heads. Right now, we're just going to need two, basically, which is the 1.5 and the 2 millimeter. Also, these are really great in the field because they don't take much space. And for soldering iron, it's TS100. This is an insane one. It's portable. You can build whole quads with this. I've done that on the channel before. However, I don't have the connector that's going to reach all the way here right now. So we're just going to use my basic one. But this will do anything you ever wanted. This is a really great one. And it used to be 80 bucks and now it's like 40 bucks. So that's really great. And it's just some cutters, some tweezers. So let's get started all right so for this build we're not going to go to my normal technique which is start with the flight controller but we kind of are but we're just going to prepare every single pad we're going to need first and also give you tips on how to solder so first let's start out with the motor pads since they're already broken out for us and should be the easiest to get started with here now i have my temperature set to 450 degrees celsius and reason for that is because this board is going to have some really great heat dissipation here and there we go, we have our first one. As you can tell, I'm heating up the pad first, just like this, and then I'm adding the solder. So we're just gonna do a couple of the motor ones together. I'll skip over them, and then we'll go to the main pads as well. So you kind of get an idea of how I'm currently doing this here. So we'll just do three more together here. Now you don't wanna hold the soldering iron there for too long because you can see that big hole right in the middle. And if you hold it there for too long, the solder is just going to fall through to the other side and it could make an absolute mess and even bridge two of them together. So keep that in mind. All right, so I'm going to skip over the next six and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, so the motor pads are done. But if you've noticed something about the frame that I have the flight controller put in backwards. And why is that? Well, this is usually the back right here. This is where the back would be. But this uh, positive and negative here, the bit where the battery is going to connect was actually barely touching this carbon fiber and you never want that. So since it's symmetric and I could put the top plate either this way or this way, I've gone ahead and flipped it and I'm going to make the back the new front. So this used to be the back, but however, it's going to be the front now. So keep that in mind. That's why I did it this way. Don't think I screwed up and blow the comments down there. All right. So the motors are done. What's next? Let's start with these guys right here. So we're going to need the camera, we're going to need the transmitter, we're also going to need the receiver, and we're also going to need smart audio, which is going to be pretty interesting because smart audio is going to go somewhere slightly different than usual here. And let's start out with the pads. Now the first one over here is ground, and as you can tell, I'm coming in from the right side here, so I don't risk hitting any components. I'm just going to make sure my forearms are rested on the edge of the table. Make sure you're really comfortable and you could move your hands freely and then start uh, proceeding with the soldering here. So here was ground and what is this? 5 volts VO video output, but on the documentation VO seems to be the camera which should be VI But um, I think there's a typo on the PCB here. Here's another ground. This should be for our receiver uh, Video transmitter. Sorry, 
and VI, which is supposed to be VO. This is supposed to be for our video line that's going to our video transmitter. And then we have the last three here, which are going to be for our receiver, which are 5 volt. And then I think it's S bus. I'm sorry if I'm getting them wrong here, the last three, because I can't see. I know this one is ground here, this last one here. As you can tell, I've bridged them. And the reason why they're bridging like that is because it does have edge plating and they're really close to each other. So a nice technique is just to come like this and just kind of push away and just keep doing that and cleaning the, the uh, soldering tip, the soldering iron tip. Now I did bridge the last two here because the ground takes a bit longer to heat up so it kind of uh, bridged with this one and I just kept moving the um, soldering iron just back like that. I'd put it in, move it back, clean the tip and just kept doing that until I cleared the bridge. But you also need to take into consideration to watch this side also the edge of the board since these are, uh, they have the edge plating which means the solder will also flow to the other side. So keep that in mind and make sure you don't bridge them or else you have a very big problem. Now, we're also going to need the smart audio for the video transmitter. And where we're going to get that is we're going to get it from the T6 pad, which is right there. And that's going to be this pad right here. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to solder to. If you're not confident enough, I recommend not attempting it. But if you follow along, make sure the soldering iron is just standing up like this. And then just come in. We're going to heat up the pad first. And then just move back and forth. There we go. We have a little solder on there. So that was much easier than expected, which is really great. Now, let's go ahead and start with the motors here. So we're going to do maybe two motors together, and then we'll skip over the rest here. Now, the way I'm going to solder the motors is I'm going to solder them correct in the correct order, uh, just to make it really nice. And later on, we could either flip the orientation of the motor, the way it's spinning through the BLHeli uh, S software, or you can just change two wires to fix that. And we'll get into that in a later video. Right now, we're just concentrating on the build here because we don't want the video to be too, too long. Now, when attempting to install the motor wires, I highly recommend you use some sort of tweezers and also uh, try not to hold the tweezers straight up like this. Sideways is much better because you can apply more force on it and it's just overall much more stable. Now, the first thing I like to do always is heat up the pad first. So I'm going to heat up the pad here and then I like to bring in the wire and then just put the soldering iron on top of the wire. Hold it, hear that crunching sound, let go, don't move and then so because if you move it's not going to give a good connection so you want to wait for that to kind of cool down and turn into a solid again now this motor wire might be a little bit too long and um we'll try to we'll try to attempt it right now i would have liked it a little bit shorter than what it is right now there we go oh, that came out pretty nice make sure there's no wire strands sticking out when you solder the motor wires and have two of these touch each other because if you do then you're more likely going to burn either the motor or the ESC and in this case it would be everything so keep that in mind and just be very careful there we go we have another one very nice so now we have our first motor done and again let's do the second motor now as you can tell I'm also starting from the left and moving to the right and the reason for that is is because I'm right-handed and this way I have less probability of hitting the next wire over. So right here I have no wires behind the soldering iron as I'm going to the left, to the right side. And the last one here. Really awesome. Alright, so that's perfect. We've got the motors done now. And I'm going to go ahead and skip over these real quick. And then we'll come back and we'll do the rest of this stuff. All right, so now the motors are completely done. Also, something you need to take into consideration when you install these motors is check if they're bridged. If they're not bridged, you also need to check the sides of the board here because they can also bridge on the sides. So keep that in mind because it does have edge plating. It's going to be difficult to see it on camera now, but keep that in mind and double check that. That's very, very important because you don't want to lose this whole build over a simple mistake. So we're going to start now with the uh, receiver. So let's go ahead and do that first. And I'm going to start from the top and move my way to the bottom. It's just going to make my life so much easier here. So the first one up there is going to be ground. So I'm going to go ahead and get my ground ready. Now you need to take something also into consideration. Whenever you're soldering a ground pad, usually it takes longer to heat up. So you want to keep the soldering iron on there slightly longer than any other pad. So keep that in mind. And that's very important. You do that so you get a good connection and you also melt the solder so the next one down the line is going to be the s bus so that's going to be my white wire here 
which is going to be the signal. As you can tell, we didn't have to hold it for that long, which is really nice. Then we have 5 volt. So these are pretty small, so you got to be a little bit careful when you are soldering in this area. Everything is really cramped together, and we do have a lot of uh, components very, very close by. And um, just take your time, make sure you're comfortable. So like this, our receiver is basically complete and everything's looking good. Small tug shows us that they're installed correctly here. Now, the next step down the line is going to be a video transmitter. The video transmitter is, um, is going to be a pretty interesting one because not everything goes here. Two wires are going to go here, one wire is going to go here, and another wire is going to go all the way back here. You might be like, well, why is that? Our video transmitter has something called Smart Audio, which will allow us to change the channels through the on-screen display. We also have this yellow wire, which is going to be our video, ground, which is going to be ground, and the red wire, which is power, which is going to be battery voltage from back here. So let's start off with, let's see, what do we have first? Let's start out with our yellow wire. Our yellow wire is going to go on VI here. So let's go ahead and install that into place here. Now I'm heating up the pad again, and then I'm bringing in the wire. Really nice. Next, it's going to be ground. Now make sure you ground it here. Very important. All right. So remember, ground takes a little bit longer than usual to heat up. So there we go. Then we're going to get our smart audio wire, and that's going to go all the way right there. Now also something to take into consideration, if you're installing a FlySky iBus receiver or a Spectrum, uh, you're going to want to install it on the R pad next to the T there. But you're not going to be able to run smart audio then, so keep that in mind. So here we go. We're going to install that guy into place, and it seems like it's installed. Really nice. The positive is going to be at the battery voltage in the back. Since we haven't done the XT60 just yet, we're going to come back to that later. So we're going to leave the power for a little bit later here. However, what we can do is we can get started on the cam right there. Now I'm going to remove this standoff real quick so I don't melt it, because usually I do end up melting these. And let's go ahead and grab our camera wire, which is going to be this guy right here. And as you can tell, I've already prepared all the wires, which makes my life so much easier. And I definitely recommend you do the same thing. Strip them, twist them really, really good, add the solder, and then trim them, and you get something like this, and it just makes the overall process so much easier. And here we go, we have another one. Now also, if you like my content, I am releasing really awesome t-shirts on my website, so come check it out. And on my Patreon, if you become my Patreon, you not only support the channel, you also get a ton of stuff for free, and you get access to my secret shop, which is something where... I sell stuff for super, super cheap, and it's really great for a lot of people. So, yeah, come join my Patreon and check out my t-shirts because it supports the channel, and you get really awesome t-shirts in return. They're not some crappy-ass t-shirts. We really take time designing them, capturing the core essence of FPV. <laughs> Sounded like an advertisement. That's really funny. All right, so now we have the camera into place. We had the VO, which is the yellow wire, the 5 volt, which is the red wire, and the ground, which is the black wire. So we're, <laughs> we're basically done with this build, just the power and the low ESR capacitor, and we're good to go. So let's set that up real quick. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to install the low ESR capacitor before we do the wires. Now, we want to find the ground, which is really small, but that's the minus, and this side is the plus here. And if we take a look at the low ESR capacitor, we see this is the minus, so that's going to go to the minus right here. We're just going to install them into the holes just like that. And maybe I want to install them in the bigger holes. I think that would be a little bit better. Yeah, that's better. Because you get a lot more space between uh, the leads here. Make sure you also trim the leads. You don't want these leads going all the way touching the carbon fiber. Because if you do that, that's basically a short circuit. Because carbon fiber is conductive. You don't want anything touching the carbon fiber except plastic and screws. So keep that in mind. Now we want to hold the low ESR capacitor into place. So we're going to add... Actually, we're going to add a bunch of solder right now. Because we need to. So... Uh, that doesn't really matter. So we're gonna add just a bunch of solder instead of a little bit So if you take a closer look now look how hard the positive is So if this is hard the ground's gonna be even Harder uh, just because of the heat dissipation because the ground plane is usually all over the board here And I don't like the way I'm actually executing this. I'm gonna move it to the side like this here. It's much better There we go you don't want to hold the soldering iron there for too long again because then the solder would also drip to the other side and that's something we we really don't want since we already have our motor wires connected and we're not going to be able to really flip the flight controller upside down 
to have the solder fall back to the other place. So keep that in mind. Look how hard the ground is. And I'm at 450 degrees Celsius. So that's that's pretty insane. Okay. It's really difficult. There we go. Finally. So that's nice. We got that done. Now, you need to double check the bottom side of this uh, uh, side right here just to see if any solder is falling through or touching. Uh, here we're fine, just a little bit is coming down, but nothing is touching the frame. So in that perspective, we're pretty good here. So now it's going to be our XT60 here. And again, the red is going to be where the plus is. So the red is going to be right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this with a tweezer because it's going to get really, really toasty really, really fast. So I'm going to heat up the pad here first, which is going to take some time because there's a lot of copper in this board here. Okay, really nice. And then I'm gonna go over the wire and just keep doing that. You can hear a really nice, beautiful crunching sound. Move the soldering iron, keep the wire into place because it takes time to solidify. And bam, we have our positive. Now the, again, the ground is going to be a little bit more difficult and we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer than we did on the uh, positive there. There we go. As you can tell, I'm kind of spinning the um, the soldering iron slightly. There we go. It's going to be much, much harder. There we go. You could hear that. Hopefully, you could hear that crunching sound. You don't want the solder to jump to any of those little tiny components next to uh, that pad right there. Okay. That seems to be good, I think. That seems to be great here. And let's take a closer look now. So there we go. And what's the next step? Well, the next step is we're going to go ahead and bring in our video transmitter and start connecting the puzzle. Oh, no, we forgot one important thing, which is the, the power for the video transmitter needs to go back here with the positive. So we're going to zoom back in here, and we're just going to install it into place. Maybe we should have done it when we installed the uh, capacitor. That would have made our life easier. Much, much, much easier. Okay, there we go. You don't have to melt the whole thing. That's fine. You can just like, kind of like this. There we go. That's in the place now. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and bring our video transmitter. Make sure the MMCX is pointing to the back. And again, this one is as well linked down below. So let's just uh, secure it into place really quick. I'll just use anything for right now just to make our life a little faster here. I'm using big standoffs, just easier to spin. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and connect the uh, connector for the video transmitter into place here. All right, so that's into place. This is going to be for the camera. This is our receiver. Our receiver is going to go in the uh, kind of like the top plate of the frame, which you'll see in a bit. Okay, so we have that installed and just plug in the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and just put the camera into the upper plate and then uh, we'll take it from there go ahead and start connecting everything so here's the camera wires that we've done and I just installed the camera into the upper plate here so just plug that right in this is going to be for our video transmitter which is going to be connected right there here is our receiver which I put double-sided tape on top of in order to stick it to the upper plate now I highly recommend maybe you secure it with something a little bit uh, stronger than double-sided tape, depending on your double-sided tape this one isn't that great this is just temporarily because I still need to bind it later for the uh, uh, installation process or once we finish this completely all right guys so now it's been put together here and i've also installed the receiver with better double-sided tape and ran the antennas through here with a zip die so overall this is one of the fastest builds on the channel i've ever done in my life actually and um, it's coming out pretty cool so we put high kv motors to be tested with this setup here to see how well it will be able to handle uh such amp draw and i'm going to put a pretty steep pitch prop on this as well but overall, it just looks insane. It's like this old gunmetal uh, color here, which is just, I don't know if the camera's going to do it justice. And look how empty that stack is inside. That's a lot of free space in there. So that's really cool into that perspective. And um, yeah, so everything's linked down below, guys. Um, the flight footage and also the beta flight setup will be upcoming within a couple days um, after this has been released. And also, if you're looking for the flight footage of this, keep checking back on this video and it'll be pinned in the top comment. So keep that in mind as well. And um, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, everything's linked down below. 
And if you want this sexy beast, come join my Patreon because I do give these away. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.